Okay, here we are here now. Steve, how are Hello. you feeling about uh, this new war on top of the old wars? Well, um, I, the, the people I follow, the commentators and analysts I follow predicted that this was a, a high possibility to be followed by a direct attack on Iran. Um, the the Ansar Allah movement, uh, part of the National Liberation Alliance in Yemen, will not be intimidated by these attacks. They, these same the same governments, the United States and the UK, were behind the military attacks on Ansar Allah uh, during the Yemen War, except they weren't carrying it out. The Saudis were carrying it out. Um, we're wondering where did the airplanes get refueled? Did the airplanes come from Saudi Arabia or another Arab country? Oh, uh, or I or, saw or, the or, uh, report about that. The United Kingdom has a military base in uh, Cyprus, and they have a refueling tanker uh, plane as well in the air. And so they had these Falcon jets take off from uh, Cyprus uh, that attack oh. Yemen. So this okay. is uh, getting to be quite international. Yes, it is. Um, uh, I heard that Oman has now said there's a no-fly zone over his country. So there's definitely um, some intrigue and hope by the um, by the enemy, the United States and Great Britain, that they will be able to inflict some wounds on, on Sir Allah and prevent it from carrying out solidarity um, blockades of the waterways to support Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, let, time will tell if this is successful, but the act itself was an act of war. It was an act that the United States and Great Britain had no right to carry out. There's mm -hmm. no justification uh, from their countries, from the United Nations. So mm -hmm. it was definitely an act an act of war against um, the people of, of, the, of the region and against Yemen in, in particular. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another case to go to the International Criminal Court of Justice now, because of the dispute between states. And uh, Yemen is yeah. now being, uh, is a government, you know, like uh, led by the Houthis, you know, who's been attacked, you know, by two other states. This reminds me of the 1956 war when uh, Britain and France attacked Egypt because Nasser had nationalized the Suez Canal. And so they went to take back the Suez Canal. And they were supported by Israel at the time as well, in '56. What That's when know? Israel uh, occupied the Sinai Peninsula, went right up, you know, to the Suez Canal, and they took it. They took it over, but the United States came in at that time and forced Israel to back off, and uh, the Suez Canal was given back to Egypt, with assurances that you know there would be no blockades, and. Uh, and then, you know, there there was the uh, peace treaty with Egypt, you know, under, say, you know, uh, General Sadat that gave the Sinai back to Egypt, you know, uh, afterwards, in which Egypt removed itself as, uh, a con uh, you know, a, an opposition power to Israel and let Israel get away with, you know, everything else in terms of the occupation of Palestine. That's when Egypt, you know, no started normalizing, you know, with Israel. Yeah, 56 all over again. Wow. Huh. Well, I, I hope our our viewer take that into account that this is nothing new. That these acts of enemy forces, be it France, Great Britain, Germany, the United States, they're all and also Australia. I was watching the Aussie Cossack last night, and the Aussie Cossack made the statement that Australia was involved with this also, that they had some role in 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 this barbaric attack on on Yemen. So they're all birds of a feather flock together and their their time will come and the people of the Mideast are still mobilizing and organizing and fighting back. So the bombing really may have some infrastructural damage, but the will and desire of the people for the liberation continues. Oh yes, they've announced they're going to be retaliating, you know, and it's going to be probably centered on the U.S. military bases throughout the region there, in the Western Orient, around the uh, Red Sea and the uh, 
Persian Arab Gulf uh, as well is, can get involved here with Iran, a sea battles over control of the lanes. This is uh, going to be very interesting. Meanwhile, the uh, capitalist economy is sinking, <laughs> except for the U.S. economy seems to be, you know, in terms of employment, seems to be doing quite well, but it's um, something called the PPI. I don't know what that is, you know, <clears throat> has just declined, you know, and the stock market has gone into shock. Well, um, one, one thing I wanted to mention to your viewers again is that um, uh, this this week or last week there was a Boeing airplane, and the door fell off the airplane in in flight. In flight, yeah. And um, the Boeing stock is taking a hit. So again, it's really not a good. Even though there may be micro signs of a quote unquote good U.S. economy, uh, people are concerned about flying. Uh, when doors come off airplanes and airplanes have to be grounded, that doesn't help the U.S. economy either. Yeah, that's a sign of the times. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yes. So I, 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 I personally see this bombing by the United States and Great Britain as a sign of the increasing barbarism mm. of, of, of these nations towards peoples who don't want to be, who want to be left free want to determine their own destiny and who are going to continue to determine their own destiny until they achieve their total freedom. Mm -hmm. What kind of nations just bombs a country? Mm. Who, who does that? Mm. Only, only an aggressor. Mm. Mm. Um, I watched the uh, Internet Court of Justice uh, presentations by both um, South Africa and uh, Israel, the South African presentation was masterful, incredible, comprehensive, profound, uh, nuanced, detailed, with uh, the utmost, you know, legal argumentation made, you know, it was really magnificent by a set of lawyers that were all, you know, incredible. Israel, <laughs> I mean, the, the the representative of Israel, you know, when he was listening to South Africa, he had his head bowed, you know, like in shame, practically. But uh, they came back with the argument that I anticipated. And I had written, you know, a counter argument to their argument, you know, even before they had made it. <laughs> and I put it into the chat here. It concerns okay. the Holocaust, of course, you know, which was the first thing that, I, you know, I addressed at the uh, Jewish ritual uh, <clears throat> here in Montreal, you know, at the Jewish community campus which is, you know, one Holocaust does not justify another, which is exactly, you know, what Israel is trying to, you know, get away with. <laughs> it's, you know, not only illogical, self-contradictory, but, you know, they don't care. <laughs> and there's a report that came out in uh, the Jerusalem Times, you know, paper today that I have on a, a share page to show in which, you know, the demonstrations, anti-war demonstrations are being outlawed by the police, by the uh, minister uh, who he thinks, you know, controls the police, Ben Giver, uh, this, and even, you know, uh, the Supreme Court. So, you know, there's a number of things to get into here. And the point being that what uh, should have been introduced as a legal argument to avoid the... Um, the Zionist argumentation that uh, they are operating in a preemptive mode to uh, uh, forestall any future Holocaust by the Arabs. The Arabs are supposed to be, you know, like planning a Holocaust of, of uh, all the Jewish people and especially the Jewish Israelis. Okay. And this is why they're doing this, you know, because they have no other choice. And they have a Hebrew expression called kein breira, which means no other choice. So they excuse any and every, you know, like... Uh, violation of human rights, you know, by the expression, those two words, you know, that's it, that's all, you know, they just say those two words, you know, and then all the arguments, you know, like are nullified according to their mentality, kind of, no other choice. Okay, so, so I knew that they were going to come up with this. And so, you know, it's essential, although they didn't do so, it was essential, you know, to make a legal argument, you know, that Israel does not represent the Jewish people. 
and they cannot claim, you know, to be representing the Jewish people. They cannot be claiming, you know, to be representing <clears throat> uh, Jewish people in, by forestalling another Holocaust, because you know what they represent is just a state, and the state is not the representative of the Jewish people. You know, for the very simple empirical argumentation that majority of the Jewish people don't even live in that state, are not citizens of that state, do not vote for the governments of that state, and cannot be represented by that state. You know, by the simple fact they don't even have a vote. You know, like, you know, we here in, in Montreal, you know, are just Jewish Canadians, you know, who do not have a vote in the elections of Israel. But, you know, Israel seems to think that they represent us. And there's a lot of people, you know, in the, even in the Palestinian Solidarity Movement who thinks that Israel represents the Jewish people as well. <clears throat> but that's not the case. One, we're not a majority, you know. Uh, who are living in Israel. We, a majority of the Jewish people, do not live in Israel, and uh, we are not represented by the state of Israel. So the state of Israel can only argue on behalf its, on its own behalf, and uh, they cannot you know, claim that uh, the Jewish people are being accused here. It is not the Jewish people who are being accused you know, of genocide. It is the state of Israel and its Zionist movement and political parties that are being accused of genocide. Well, That's I, the, I, the first I, major I principle. That. I appreciate your sharing that because many people are going to watch this hearing. Maybe they'll watch, the, they'll look at the news as far as a summary, if it's even on, in the press, or people will read a paragraph or two, but they're not going to really get down into it. Now, let me give, let me give you my opinion of this whole IC, uh, ICC situation. First of all, I think that the ICC the, is a bankrupt organization because it can be used any way that the that, that the that the capitalists internationally want it to be used for. I don't. I'm not going to rest my hopes that the ICC would ever rule in favor of liberation. However, if organizations or governments want to u utilize it. For political purposes, that's fine. I think that people are missing something, and I don't see why it's being missed. I'm going to break it down to a term that people don't want to hear. And excuse me, a white country is being accused by a black country. Mm. It's inc it's incredible. Mm. Mm. South yes. Africa is a, is a black country. Mm. Israel is a white country. Mm. Yeah, it is a, being brought to court by a black country. Yeah, as it I said to our radio world. interview, it's, Israel is a white supremacist regime. Yes, yes. for and two reasons: because world. it uh, it, it suppresses, yeah. steps on the Palestinians, and it also, you know, exploits, you know, the the Jewish Arabs. You know, the, the uh, so, you know the Jewish I'm, Arabs. I'm, you know, are second class. You know, like a cast of you know citizens there. And, so it's white supremacy, you know, for those both those reasons. And I am not trying to racialize the situation. No, it's but, true. Histor but historically, that is what has occurred. Yeah. yeah. Now, in that sense, it is an unprecedented mm -hmm. event that South Africa, a country that led the anti that was in the vanguard of the anti-apartheid movement is now using its its newly found political clout to bring Israel, which is the collective West, to court. <laughs> yes. It, 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 it is it is it is in and now you see United States mm -hmm. and Germany lining up behind Israel. So you so in a sense, look at who is who is backing whom. Look at who is backing whom and what nation yeah. on the planet, one nation, say we're going to take them to court. Yeah. Even if we fail, we're taking them to court. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. all of Israel's so-called yeah. friends, I mean, excuse me, all of, all of the Palestinian so-called friends, they may be supporting South Africa in the background, they may be supporting South Africa quietly, 
But by the time Africa put his neck on the line, and after this hearing, trust me, Israel's going to try to retaliate against South Africa. Uh -huh. Don't think that they will not. Uh -huh. They're a nation. They're a nation of evil of evil leaders. Yeah. They're a nation who has blood up up to their neck. Yeah. As of Africa's economy and their their leaders must be prepared for Mossad to come to there and try and kill their leaders. Yeah. Don't think the Mossad will not try and kill South Africa's leaders or important people in in the military. Yes, they will. Hmm. That's the kind of bastard state. Israel is. That's what they've done so to Iran. Africa. Exactly. Yes, yes. So what I'm saying is South Africa um, had just better be ready after all this is over with because Israel is going to attack them in some kind of way. Maybe in, in the United Nations, maybe send a hit team out to, to, to assassinate someone who's on, on a mission overseas. I don't know, to poison their water. Something. Because Israel is, is a state a state of unknown aggression and brutality. Mm. A black country mm. took Israel to the court. Mm. That is unprecedented in world history. Yeah. No one's talking about that. Israel's mm -hmm. supposed to be Israel says it is superior to all black mm. people, of mm. all, to all brown people. Mm. Nobody's there. They, are, they feel they're, they're superior to everyone. And the fact that a black country brought it to court mm. has not yet been recognized the symbolic mm -hmm. victory of that because that doesn't happen that when does it happen before mm -hmm. they've never been held accountable for anything yeah. israel's done whatever it wants since it first wound up on the scene mm -hmm. and it took south africa mm -hmm. to bring it to court whether the court is just legitimate or whether it even makes any impact to me, that is that is historical importance here. Mm -hmm. that, South, that South Africa brought Israel to court. Wow, yeah. That to me, it's, it's, it hasn't, and we have not talked about that enough. How certain things politically and historically have to be exposed for what they are. It, I mean, South Africa can lose the case. It's, I mean, we we want to. Uh... Win. This is a historic turning point. Yes, exactly, world, exactly. world significance, you know, historic turning yes. point, which yes. leads me to be concerned, you know, because, you know, if you look at the composition of the judges walking in, all 15 judges, you know, like, uh, you know, two thirds are from our white nationals. So they could easily, you know, like use any pretext, you know, like in the first thing that Israel argued there, you know, was that they didn't get enough time to respond, you know, to South Africa's, you know, uh, letter of objection to the genocide. And therefore, you know, the court doesn't have jurisdiction because Israel didn't have enough time to respond, you know. And South Africa was arguing that they had contacted Israel with their objections and Israel did not respond. So they're, how long are they supposed to wait, you know, like while the genocide is going on? So, well, again, let's go back to Rwanda. Rwanda, nobody did anything. The world knew a genocide was going on, and nobody did nothing. Hmm. So this is a, this is an African country that a thousand kilometers, a thousand or two thousand kilometers away, had a genocide in, in its own its own in its own on, on its own continent, and now someone had the had the had the authority had the authority and the will to say no, we're hmm. going to stop this genocide right now. Hmm. I hope people can learn from this that when you see something going on wrong, mm. you have to say you have to say something. Yes, and the earlier the, that you intervene and call for a halt, the better your right. chances of stopping it. You know, because once it goes on for a while, you know, like it has this momentum. You know, and everybody sets into place to let it keep on going on. You know, because they think there's nothing to do to stop it. Yes, it's a. Uh, yeah. um, and there's, and, there's, and, and there's, another, there's another point to this whole matter we have to look at. Mm -hmm. The nations who are supporting Israel, the United States, the UK, and Germany, are opposed to a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. So in essence, they're saying, well, this South Africa, this South Africa claim, this is like this is like children coming to court and trying to act like adults. Of course, it's meaningless. 
keep on killing Israel, keep on killing, it's okay, keep on bombing, keep on cutting off the water, keep on cutting off electricity, keep on cutting off the health care, keep on cutting off the food. They're in total support of Israel's acts against the Arab peoples in the region mm -hmm. and against the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. So we want to know who are <coughs> who are the political enemies mm -hmm. of Palestinians. Anyone who supports Israel in their in their defense of their actions is an enemy mm -hmm. of the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. court, 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 is very, court is very good. You see who's on your side mm -hmm. and who's against you. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. So the United yeah. States, Israel, um, the UK, Australia, uh, these countries who participated in Germany, they are they are they are totally in support of what's Germany, happening. Germany, Germany, yeah, Germany. I know Germany, yeah. Germany. How, I mean, how dare Germany? How dare they show their ugly, filthy hand? Mm -hmm. But we see their hand is ugly and filthy. So mm. when we start looking at who's two stands with whom, mm. we know who our enemy, we know who our enemies are. Mm. Because mm. because court is a very court is a very symbolic place. Mm. You have the accused and the accuser. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Israel is, is accused, is accused. And, and they've had to reply, you know, like previously they, right. they didn't bother showing up, you know. They said uh, <clears throat> but now they've been forced to come and uh, reply, you know, to the accusations. Because, so because, because they don't the only feel... thing they have, you know, up there, you know, a sleeve, you know, like it says Trump card is the Holocaust. And that doesn't well, count. Doesn't doesn't count for a state. Doesn't count. That doesn't count now. Yeah. They, and, and, and the thing about it is, again, Israel, United States, Germany, Australia, the UK, they've all in some way participated in the colonization. And oppression of of people and help shape the world into oppressed and oppressor peoples and nations, and they've shown where they stand. Mm -hmm. I hope people. I hope people look at. I hope people can take my approach. Our listeners, mm -hmm. our viewers, take my approach and just consider it, because this was not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You were not supposed to be. be I'm, I, how dare you! Bring me to court, you black bastards in South Africa. That's what this is all about. Mm. You, 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 you pygmies who think you're a nation. <laughs> How dare you? That's what's going on here. It was so that's, symbolic that's as well, symbolic. because the, the right. judge, you know, the lawyer for Israel was this British, you know, aristocratic creature. Right. And, right. and the and the lawyer, you know, for uh, South Africa uh, was an Irish woman. <laughs> you know, like it was so symbolic. Very. There you go. Yeah. yeah, so so I, I think that this is an important even even though I did not recognize the ICC as a legitimate body for anything because it, it can be used politically by anybody and, and the State Department used it to to indict President Putin. Yeah. And yeah. That, and that and, and, and that and that is a fake indictment, has a fake charge. Yeah. So let let's so let, let's not get all excited. Okay, that was the that. ICC, International Criminal Court. But this so, is uh, the uh, state court, you know, the International Court of Justice. You know, maybe it's different. But from what I saw, the composition right. of the judges, you know, I'm not optimistic. But I, I have something to show you about the anti-war movement inside uh, of Israel. Good. Good. Have a look at this. Uh... Let me see now. Okay. Okay. Uh... Where, 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 where is it? Um, is this it? No, this is Amy Winehouse. Here, let's see if I, okay. I can select it here. Okay. I'm losing it. Um, I don't know. Here. 
No. Here, um, please uh, continue yourself, in, and I'll find this. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, I just want I just want to talk about that. The um, right now in the war uh, in Palestine, we people are have been saying that there have been less attacks, this, that, and the other. Um, I think that one of the things I found very interesting about the videos that were shared in the um, by the by the South Africans were some of the uh, film of the Israeli soldiers. Uh, chanting that there, that, that that there are that there is no, there are no neutrals. Everybody is on one side or the other, and they have the responsibility to kill everybody who who who's on the other side. They were singing mm -hmm. some songs, and uh, I found that I found it kind of telling because the the commentator was saying, well, they feel that they can sing these songs because most of the most of the world doesn't speak Hebrew, but they forgot that people can translate the songs. And they can transfer it with words and meanings. So we, again, we see a situation where the conscript army of Israel is being led by its leaders, um, Net, Net, Netanyahu and others, to carry out acts of aggression and, and, and in their cultural preparation by singing songs that are that are promoting it to commit genocide. Yeah, but here's the opposition. But the opposition is being denied a permit, you know, for anti-war rallies in Tel Aviv. Okay, yeah. so they have these, you know, big, you know, uh, forums. They have hundreds of people who are joining into the opposition movement called uh, Together. Uh, uh, the, the, the it started off as a group called Together, and now with the because it includes, you know, the uh, Palestinian Israelis as well, yeah. and and now they're called Standing Together. And uh, another uh, constituent that's joined in this United Front is Women Wage Peace. And it says there's 20 other human rights groups involved as well. That's good. Hmm. That's good. And well, so that... the uh, minister, the fascist minister, is trying to stop, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's trying to use the police, you know, to deny them a permit, you know, as if he needed a permit to demonstrate. So it's gone to the Supreme Court and everything, you know, and say Itmar ben Givir, the far-right national security minister, supports a ban on all anti-war protests. And in early November, the Israel's Supreme Court upheld a ban on protests in two Arab-Israeli cities. Police later questioned three former Arab-Israeli lawmakers over plans to organize a protest in Nazareth, in northern Israel. They say later... Well. Israel's first organized anti-war protest of several hundred people took place in a fenced-off area in the Tel Aviv Park after the Supreme Court hearing, in which police allowed it to go forward. <laughs> but Ben Giver, you know, wants to stop the police from allowing it to go forward. It's incredible. Well, this week, the Supreme Court issued an injunction saying that Ben Giver, who oversees this Israel police, is not allowed to give police officers instructions during protests. Wow. This is, you know, like... And then it goes on and on. And then, you know, here I'm scrolling in so that people can do a sc capture screen, you know, of the whole article. Yes. And the, uh, yeah. and the, uh, I, 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 I I'll put the, our, uh, the our link into to, the chat as well. Yes. Yeah. I, I encourage our viewers to take this, to take this information and share it broadly. Here it is. This is, is, you know, the anti war movement. It's, it's uh, growing. So there's something. Good. That is uh, very important for us to take note of. Yes, I agree. Okay, and here I'll put the link into the chat here, and then we're going to run out of minutes pretty soon now. But there it is. Okay, so tomorrow we go back to the uh, vigil in front of the Jewish Community Campus, and uh, I've added the uh, uh, the link the uh, uh, the uh, link for the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund, you know, website onto the banner, you know, so we can, in effect, wow. you know, announce that the Jewish Bund is back after being uh, destroyed by the Nazis and after being suppressed by the um, Stalinist uh, bureaucracy in the old USSR, we're back and we're going to uh, let everybody know about it. So well, that, that, that's, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. And uh, that's the best I can do. I don't know what else I can do, you know, to stop this genocide from happening. I well, we, everything. 
we, yeah, we, we have the, uh, we, we the Jewish the petition is going online as well, you know, in which, you know, we're collecting in Jewish people's, you know, voice to stand up against uh, who are ceasefire now, you know, because the only the only force, you know, that the, the designers are going to listen to is a Jewish force, Jewish people's force, Jewish people's power. And here we are. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. And uh, this is going to work. This is going to work. <laughs>